Hi, this is Mark with Blue Poodle Studio, and today we're talking about toys, of course, and in particular, we're going to talk about building and construction toys. So what does that mean? Of course, probably almost everybody watching this video has some Legos in their house if you got kids, or maybe you just play with them yourself when you were young. But kit Legos is a great example of probably the most popular building toy in today's world. Building toys and toys in general were thought in the early 19th century to kind of pitched on the idea of helping children develop fine motor skills and critical thinking. And so it was uh, basically became a form of uh, educational, early educational products. Uh, but today we're gonna look at uh, kind of bookend two very classic building toys. Uh, one being from the 1960s, the famous Lincoln Logs. And we're gonna of course talk about this in more depth. And then a more contemporary version of building toys, uh, the Zolo product line, which uh, was in the 80s. So we're going to look at the 60s and the 80s and talk a little bit about each and uh, see what's in store with those. So let's first dig into Lincoln Logs. So Lincoln Logs were uh, actually invented by um, John Lloyd Wright, the son of the famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. And uh, apparently, uh, the story goes, the inspiration for these came, he was working with his father in Japan, and his dad at the time was designing a very famous building called the Imperial Hotel in Tokyo, which used interlocking logs or beams in an effort to be uh, earthquake proof. And so from that inspiration, uh, he decided to create this toy and of course named after uh, our famous president, Abraham Lincoln, uh, and really kind of tapping into early Americana. Uh, and um, the packaging at the time, these products were originally made with actual redwood wood, although later plastic, and then they kind of swing back into uh, pine and other less expensive woods, uh, more, more commonly available woods at a later stage. And although he launched the product by himself originally, he later sold it to Play School, and the product has lived on, and you can still buy Lincoln Logs today, uh, but of course they don't have quite the same cachet, I think, as this uh, original set. So, um, I have not, this, this particular product belonged to my older brother. I have not looked inside this box in uh, 20 plus years, so I'm not really sure what's inside of it. I know there's some Lincoln Logs in there, so we're going to uh, pour this thing out and see what we can build uh, together here uh, today. So let's take a look at this now. Hold on, here we go. Yikes. <laughs> All right, well, quite the hot mess and frankly the instructions are missing uh, and we're missing a few pieces but it does reassure me that it says for ages 5 to 10 so with any luck without the instructions we're going to be able to put this together now as a slight uh, DIY move I did end up taking some of the smaller pieces and I have now hot melt glued them to these small squares of foam core so I have some sort of a base to start with so um, let's see now what I can put together with what we got here Okay, well, we did it. It looks pretty good. It's a little rough around the edges, but with what we had to work with, I think it turned out pretty good. But I also wanted to come back and talk about the packaging. I love packaging, and I think it's particularly a great snapshot of that era of our country's history. So uh, let's take a little closer look and see what we find here. All right, well, keeping in mind the era in which this was designed, uh, and sadly, you know, we like a lot of toys, the parts and pieces get lost when your kids are playing with them or we're playing with them. And so uh, all of the characters and figurines that came with the product are no longer there, sadly, but they do show some great pictures. And uh, these are a little bit sculpted in the style of what became like the Green Army Men of today. Uh, and we start out by seeing the Frontiersman, 
which sadly suggests that they're ready for battle between all of their aimed guns and even this one seemingly holding a club ready to hit somebody over the head. Um, we'll take a look at the character for, and then on the other side, we see the settlers, um, and they've got the uh, kind of mom and dad there, or mom and pa. Uh, the father is holding a hand axe. Again, I don't know whether he's chopping down more trees to make another log or whether he's fending off the Native Americans at the at the stockade. And of course, we see the little baby deer here. I do like all the grayed out uh, kind of pioneer artwork in the background. On this side, of course, we see that there were a whole kit of little uh, farmland or woodland creatures that were included, a rabbit, a deer, a beaver. Uh, I assume they were probably still one color. And uh, as they describe it here on the side of the box, wild North American animals. So quite a little fun collection was included. So that was sort of the nature uh, part of the piece. Uh, then uh, sadly on the back side, we have the fighting Indians. And I guess in those days, it was assumed that all Indians were fighting and they're all definitely uh, dressed and posed for war. So it's sadly and horribly politically incorrect now, but that was uh, unfortunately what was happening in the mindset at the time. Uh, do wanna show that uh, they also, of course, highlight, uh, you know, it's America's national favorite toy. They do show also some other building configurations, which um, to me, oddly and interestingly, seem to imply some of Frank Lloyd Wright's own architecture, particularly this beautiful uh, kind of split home uh, that they're showing. And uh, these were made in Chicago, which is where, of course, uh, the Wright studio was located. Uh, it does mention that it includes uh, 210 pieces and a design sheet, which has sadly long since been lost. And then uh, kind of some of the fun operational details, of course, uh, this toy cost $6 originally, uh, and you could tell it was a time where they didn't have inflation and prices didn't change very much because they literally printed the price on the side of the box versus on the sticker. And of course, it has a non-toxic non -toxic finish. It's scaled to three-quarter inch scale, uh, and they do then highlight that you can uh, build forts, cabins, and stockades, and apparently, again, they reference the design sheet and then obviously this being the storage container. So. Uh, it's held it pretty well. It's a it's a fun piece of packaging and 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 uh, was a beautiful uh, product uh, talking about our heritage as a country. So uh, we're gonna pause here and then we're gonna pivot over to take a look at the uh, the more modern version of building toys, Zolo. All right, now we're moving on to our the second part of our story, which is modern toys. So we looked at, of course, the. Lincoln Logs uh, and that project, and that was a lot of fun, but now we're, we're fast forwarding to the 1980s. And uh, this toy is called Zolo. This is a toy that was designed by uh, a, a couple of designers that uh, were from the um, Art Center of Pasadena, Pasadena, California, which is a very famous uh, art school uh, for industrial and graphic design. I, I know some, I have some friends that went, attended there as a great school. These uh, two folks had a design studio in New York, and um, and during this time in the 80s, or 70s, 80s, and the 80s, uh, there was also um, the development of a group called the Memphis Design Group, and this was a group of interior designers, architects, furniture designers out of Milan, Italy, and uh, the founding member was a gentleman named Ettore Satsas, and that started that studio, I think, in the 1981 they decided they wanted to have a whole fresh approach to design moving away from the styles of the 70s, so obviously the shag carpeting and avocado and gold into a brighter, more optimistic future. And so uh, you'll see a lot of this furniture in movies and films, but it basically became in effect sort of the design theme of the 80s. Well, uh, it was also captured very well, that look was captured very well in the Zolo toy, this toy, uh, launched in 1986, it first debuted at the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and um, was originally built as wood and hand-painted and then of course it was a huge success and ended up launching off into uh, a whole product series of product lines. Uh, I used to do a lot of trend shopping for kids when I was working for Mead and would frequently go to New York and visit museums and downtown and uptown. This particular box was purchased in the Guggenheim Museum shop in New York. 
And so uh, it was still in the early stages before uh, the toy became more mass marketing. So what is Zolo? So it's again, basically a building set and it's a series of fun and peculiar shapes that are all designed to fit together into a series of pegs and holes. So uh, just like we did with the Lincoln Logs, we're going to uh, take a look at what we got here and see what we can put together. Okay, so uh, took a few moments and tried to quickly build some fun stuff. Uh, as a marketer, I love the story that is told about these toys where uh, Byron and um, Sandra had uh, finished their prototypes and taken them out to pitch them to a couple of toy companies. And of course the toy company said, well, are these for boys? Are these for girls? What age group would this appeal to? Is this a uh, five to 10, 10 to 20? And basically they said, we don't know, but we think everyone will enjoy it. And of course, then as a result, the toy companies all declined to pursue this with them. And so they basically did it uh, as entrepreneurs and uh, were ahead of the idea of crowdfunding because that didn't exist in those days. And they launched the product. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, it debuted in New York at the uh, Museum of Modern Art and then eventually mushroomed into quite a large industry. So uh, the first ones were hand-painted wood. Now they're using, of course, the uh, blow-molded plastics uh, that are printed or painted with the colors. And uh, they've expanded the product line considerably. And even um, during the 80s and into the 90s, uh, I probably got a little bit carried away buying this stuff because I thought it was just so cool and so fun. So I did want to show they also created a travel version of this product for kids on, uh, or growing ups on an airplane. And so this, um, this little travel version comes with a small container and then is just loaded with all kinds of good fun stuff inside. I had earlier put together this little, uh, funny character with the one eye and the hair. So, uh, that's another version of it. And then, uh, they also created, uh, more materials uh, in larger shapes and sizes, including, and we'll come back to this one later, uh, this is a motorized body that uh, once you put it all together, uh, it allows the heads and the tails and the hands to spin and spin around and turn around. So uh, it's again, a lot of fun stuff and we're gonna come back and keep uh, playing with this later. But in the end, I guess it just speaks to, uh, you know, human nature is to build, is to put stuff together. Uh, again, as I said at the start of our story, uh, child psychologists and, and others said, you know, children need to play, they need to learn, they need to develop fine motor skills. And so uh, toy inventors uh, have responded over the years with a variety of products uh, and uh, it just keeps going. So I uh, hope you enjoyed today's uh, presentation and uh, we'll uh, have more to come in uh, future posts. So thanks again for joining us. Take care. Please don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks again.